I'm Maddie, and today I'm going for a trip on a sailing boat. Look, there's one over there. The sailing boat is floating on the lake. There are lots of things that are floating on the water, like a big colourful beach ball and even ducks. But not everything floats. Some things, like this pebble, sink. So why does a big boat with people in it float when a small pebble sinks? Do you know why a boat floats? Let's find out. How does it work? Floating. To find out how floating works, I've come to a boating lake. It's Libby, and it's Libby's job to sail boats here at the Boating Lake. She's called the Helm. And to sail the boats, Libby uses this, the main sail. This is what the wind pushes to make the boat move. It looks a bit like a giant bed sheet, doesn't it? The main sail helps to catch the wind and sail the boat along. The body of the boat is called the hull. And look, can you see the hull is wide and flat? And the shape is really important for helping the boat to float along. Let's find out how. I've got a piece of modelling clay. I'm going to shape it into something that looks a bit like the hull of a sailing boat. A bit like this. I'm going to place this bit of modelling clay in a bowl of water. And let's see what happens. It floats. Now, I've got the same amount of modelling clay here this time it's rolled up into a ball. What do you think will happen when I drop this into the water? Let's find out. It sinks. But what makes the modelling clay float or sink? Well, it's all down to something called density. Density is how much space something takes up and how much it weighs, how heavy it is. When the modelling clay is shaped like this, it takes up more space than when it's rolled into a ball. So that means when it's dropped in the water, it floats because it has a low density. But when the same clay is shaped like a ball, it sinks because it takes up less space and has a high density. But how else does the shape of a boat help it to float? Let's take a closer look. When a boat goes into water, the hull sinks a little and pushes water out of the way. This is called displacement. When water is displaced, it tries to go back to where it was and this pushes the boat up. We call this force buoyancy. The more water the boat displaces, the more buoyant it is. Everything on Earth is pushed down by a force called gravity. But when buoyancy pushing the boat up is the same as gravity pushing the boat down, the boat floats. That was really interesting. To show you how displacement works, I'm going to put some ice cubes in the glass of water. And I'm drawing a line on the glass to mark the water level. But all of this is going to happen really quickly, so I'm going to film it using my special slow motion camera. OK, the camera is ready. Let's drop in some ice. <gasps> did you hear the splashing sound as the ice dropped in? It did happen quite fast though, didn't it? So let's look at the footage on my slow motion camera. As the ice cube goes in, gravity pulls it down. Then the ice cube starts to float. That's because the ice cube has displaced the water. And can you see, the displaced water has made the water level go up. It's now above the black line. I think we should see floating in action for ourselves by setting sail. Now, you should never play near water without a grown-up, but I've got special permission to go onto the boat. Remember that the shape of the hull helps to displace water and let the boat float. Well, most of the hull is hidden under the water. So I've asked one of the crew to attach my special underwater camera 
to the hull so we can see what's happening underwater. Look at the wide curved hull of the boat. That's the part the displaced water pushes up against to make the boat buoyant. And look, on this special camera attached to the top of the main sail, you can see the water being displaced. out how a boat floats. What was your favourite part? Can you remember what we call the boat when it's floating on the water? That's right, we say it's buoyant. Can you remember the sound the ice cube made when I dropped it in the glass? And on my special camera, do you remember seeing the hull of the boat as we floated on the lake? to the seaside. Out at sea, there are boats, and on land, there might be a beach. I like wiggling my toes in the sand. I like to draw pictures in the sand. And I love making sandcastles. It's really fun, isn't it? But where does the sand come from? Do you know how sand is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Sand. To find out how sand is made, I've come to a beach. There's lots of different types of sand, and that's because sand is made of different things. White sand is sometimes made of coral, which lives in the sea. And black sand is made from lava that came from an erupting volcano. But the sand on this beach mostly comes from those cliffs. But how do these huge brown yellow cliffs turn into tiny grains of sand? To find out, we need to get up there. It's really high up on the cliff. You must never walk close to the edge without a grown-up. It's quite windy up here. Wind has an important job in making sand. Wind carries tiny, tiny pieces of rock in it. And when it blows against the cliffs, they wear the rock down a little. You can't see these tiny pieces of rock in the wind, but you can see how they made this rock bumpy. Over time, the bigger rock is broken down into smaller pieces. This is called weathering. But it's not just the wind that causes weathering. Even the sun weathers the rock. Can you see all of the cracks in the path? The ground has been baked by the heat from the sun, which has made it dry and shrink. We call this contracting. And rainwater can also weather the rocks when it falls from the sky into these cracks. In the winter, when it gets cold and frosty, the rainwater freezes and it gets bigger. We say that it expands. But when the water expands, it breaks the rock a little bit. It takes a long time for weathering to happen. But whenever it's warm enough for the ice to melt and cold enough for the water to freeze, the rock breaks a little bit and, eventually, the rock breaks apart. But what's happening at the bottom of the cliff by the sea? Can you see the water is quite far away from the cliffs at the moment? The seawater actually comes in and out at different times of the day, every day. We call this the tide. And look, on this beach, we can see the tide moving. When the water is far away from the land, we say the tide is out. But when it gets close, we say the tide is in. We can hear the water moving in and out, can't we? When the tide moves all the way in, the seawater will crash against the rocks. Look, the tide is getting really close to the cliffs now. It wears them down a little bit every day. This is called weathering too. When rocks are weathered into small pieces, the small pieces are carried away by wind or water. This is called erosion. And to show you how erosion works, I'm going to use this box filled with sand. 
The sand has been shaped to look a little bit like the cliffs on this beach. What do you think will happen when I blow the top of the sand with a paper straw? That's right, some of it is blown off the pile. That's the same as the small pieces of rock being moved by the wind. This is erosion. Next, I'm adding some water to the box. This is going to be our sea, and I'm using a piece of card to make the tide. Oh, look at that! It's moving the loose sand at the bottom of our cliff and it's carrying it away. That's erosion too. Over time, weathering and erosion turns the rock into tiny grains of sand. And millions of these tiny grains of sand make a beach. So we know that sand is made from weathered and eroded rock. But do you know what rock is made of? Rock is made up of lots of different natural materials called minerals. Lots of sand is made of a mineral called quartz. In fact, almost all the sand on this beach is made from quartz. But the quartz in this sand is tiny. So to see it a little bit better, we need to go and find a very special camera. Today, I'm going to be using a microscope camera. A microscope helps us to see tiny things by making them look much bigger. And the microscope is connected to this screen, so we'll be able to see anything we put under it. Wow, that is brilliant. But I can zoom in even further. Watch this. Look, can you see the tiny white and shiny yellowish crystals? That's the quartz. I can't believe how much quartz there is in just a small bit of sand. And can you see the green mineral here? That's called glauconite. Isn't it beautiful? I loved learning how sand is made. What was your favourite part? Do you remember what it's called when the big pieces of rock are broken into smaller pieces by wind and water? That's right, it's called weathering. Do you remember the sound the water made when we were on the beach? And did you see the quartz in the sand under the special microscope camera? So the next time you build a sand castle on a beach, you'll know how the sand you used to build it was made. And the next time you see a boat out on the water, you'll know how it uses displacement to float. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things 